Adide Odele, defensive line, Berlin Thunder. Adidayo Odele from the Berlin Thunder from the defensive line. Mm -hmm. Today we want to find out who you are. Yeah. So first question, how is life in Berlin for, for a guy from the UK? Um, it's exciting. Uh, life over here is um, different to what I'm used to over um, at, at, in the UK. Because in the UK, um, I'm still a student at university. So most of the time I spend studying uh, the library, revising. But over here, just because I'm here purely for football, um, it's something I'm about to get adjusted to just having to make sure um, my body is right throughout the week for, for the practices we do, uh, for the games. Uh, so, but apart from football, uh, life is it's casual. I don't really get up to much outside of, um, outside of football. But um, from what I've seen, it's a very lively place. It's very active. Um, so hopefully it's something I'll be able to get involved in a little bit more as time goes on. So let's talk about your career as a football player, or mm -hmm. let's say, how did it all start? What's mm -hmm. your football story? What brought you into the sports? So um, the first, my first memory I have watching football is, um, I used to watch this Super Bowl like every year. I wasn't really, too, growing up, I wasn't really too much of, um, of a fan, but I knew the Super Bowl was such a big event. So it was something I made time for um, every year. I would stay up because the Super Bowl used to go on like past midnight in UK on a Sunday night. I'd stay up. Um, watching football, um, sneak downstairs to watch it because I had school the next morning. Um, and then it was just one year I got really interested in the Green Bay Packers. So I followed the, uh, the playoff um, story, I think this was around 2017. Um, I followed them through the playoffs. Um, I really liked Aaron Rodgers as a player. He made the game look so easy. Um, he made throwing the ball look so easy. Um, even to the point where, you know, even I thought I could be a quarterback. But um, yeah, it made it look so easy and so fun, so I started following them. And then when I went off to university later that year, I um, had in the back of my mind that I wanted to play sports. And I tried out for se several sports, for American football, um, basketball, athletics, and I just chose football just because I wanted to try something new. And I really, really liked the team aspect of it. Um, and this is then, I've just been stuck with it. This is about three, four years ago now. And I've just been playing every year and trying to get trying to get better. And what fascinates you about the sport? Um, it was obviously um, being a big guy. I liked the fact to be um, physically um, violent um, on the field um, in a legal way. How, you know, it's a sport where obviously you need to know how to play the sport. You need to be um, cerebrally, um, mentally good, but being a big guy makes it a lot easier. Um, and I've always been a big guy growing up. Um, always liked going to the gym. I was going to the gym before, even before football. Um, so it was just the physical aspects of that which just really drew, drew me to it. So what brought you to the European League of Football then? Um, so I went on the, I, um, the International Pathway Program earlier this year. Um, unfortunately, didn't make it through. And um, one of the feedback I had was just, I was a bit too, I was a bit too raw, too new to the game. Um, I've only played the game for three, three and a half years. Um, so I knew I had to pick up some experience. Um, like football in England and UK is great, but the level over there isn't. Um, I needed something a, a little bit more challenging. Um, and then at the time, I was looking out to see um, if I was going to go to GFL to um, GFL one to, to pick up some new experience, pick up some um, <clears throat> play against um, tougher opponents. And at the end of the day, I just got in contact with Coach Jag, the head coach of, of Thunder and. Uh, it was a situation where I really liked, you know, the situation to play for a, for a, um, for a good franchise, an up-and-coming franchise, and to also be able to challenge myself against better competition. So what role does football play in your life now? Mm -hmm. um, right now it's... It's, it's more like a, it's a dream still, like I'm still dream chasing. Um, I'm, I'm still currently studying engineering in a in university, but I know like deep down in my heart, like football is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, Cause it's something I'm very happy doing. Um, it's something that if I could, I would just do it for free. But to have it as a career where you're getting paid, um, yeah, that's a dream only, only a few people can actually achieve and everyone dreams of doing that. So. Um, 
but like right now it's it's also a release it's a good release um I'm a very, very calm guy, but on the field, um, being able to, you know, exert dominance onto another human being, it's something that, that's very exciting. But how do you manage to do both? Like going to university, studying and playing the sports on such a professional level? Yeah, it's, it, was, it was tough. Um, I mean, because of the, um, the program, the pathway program, I've had to put my studies on hold for a year. So I've kind of given myself um, like two or three years to see exactly how far I can go in this sport. Um, so university is still there. At the moment, it's kind of in a back seat where football is kind of taking the main focus, taking the priority right now, because it was a chance, and I spoke about this with my family and my friends, um, like football is just a chance I couldn't really turn down. So once I see, um, once I know I've given them my best in football, I can see, um, I can go back to university and finish that off. But um, right now, yeah, football is, is number one priority for sure. And what would you say makes a good football player? A good football player, you have to be, you have to be willing to give it all. Um, you can't, you can't have any quitting you. Like even if you're down by a big score, you just always have to, have to come out on the next play um, and try your best. And also with football, you also have to understand that the other teams are going to make plays. Like they practice as well. They've got good players as well. So you have to have a kind of like a short-term memory. Like even um, if you make a mistake, you have to be willing to forget about that temporarily um, and then focus on the next play, try and do your best then and then uh, whatever mistake you made, you try and sort it out before the next game and make sure it doesn't happen again. But you made it to the NFL Pathway program after only three to four years of actually playing the sports. I mean, how did that make you feel? That's incredible. I mean, yeah, it was great. Um, but just like I said, I was, very, I was a very raw player and they knew um, that I was like a project. I was a work in progress. Um, but like I said earlier, I, I have the physical attributes, uh, the physical characteristic, that wasn't an issue. Um, being tall, being well built, long arms, um, relatively fast. So they knew they had something good to work on. Um, but it was good because like I said, I've only played the sport for three years, three and a half years. And to have the opportunity to play at the highest level, um, yeah, that was something that was very, that, was, that made me and my family and my friends very proud. Absolutely. Um, and hopefully it's something, um, it's, it's, still, it's still a goal of mine to go to the NFL, to, to play at the highest level, to show that I can indeed hang with the athletes over there. And hopefully this year in the um, AFL would, um, would show that it shouldn't, be a, it shouldn't be a problem for me. So what does a typical week look like, looks like for you? Mm -hmm. um, it's mostly just in the gym, really, um, to be honest. So our games are usually on Sundays. Um, on Monday, I kind of have a chill day where I just allow my body to relax, to, um, to heal from all the hits um, that I've taken from the day before. Um, and then on Tuesday, um, uh, I will go to the gym, do my gym sessions in the morning, um, probably that's the time where I have to do um, all my, um, my, minis uh, my casual stuff, so like my shopping, my washing and all that. Um, we have a team meeting, I'll watch film on the game. And then on Tuesday, it's gym in the morning, sleep in the afternoon, and then practice in the evening. Same with, same with um, Thursday. And then Friday, um, just gym in the morning, and then I'll go on the track just to get, um, get my hips right do some few sprints and then on Saturday just before the game that's when I take take the day off again just relax get my mind ready make sure I get a lot of hydration a lot of carbohydrates in my system ready to go for the next for the next next game and right before the game do you have any rituals or any is there do you have a lucky charm that you bring with you what do you um, usually do I'm not I'm not very superstitious so I don't really have any rituals or any um, be anything that I have to do before the games it's just um, and if you talk to my teammate, they'll tell you the same. I'm, I'm more of a, I'm a calm guy, so um, for, um, before the games, I don't really get too hyped. I don't really get too loud. Um, I just put my music in, um, I get changed, get ready. Um, I don't really need to do, I don't need too much to get me into the zone, just because, um, and I always say, if you ride the highs and the lows, then your emotions are going to be all over the place. But I like to keep um, level-headed, um, keep it flat, baseline and then I can work work off that no matter what happens. 
And what's your attitude that like on the field then? How do you want to be seen by your teammates, by the opponents and the fans of course? Yeah, on the field I just want to be seen as someone that's always going to go after it. Um, someone that's always going to try and make a play. Um, and also, um, first and foremost, to make sure I do my job and I do it well. Because um, football is a game, there are 11 people on the field, but it's one of those sports where even if one person messes up, it messes up for the whole team. So um, first and foremost, you have to make sure you do your job and do it to the best ability that you can. And then after that, you always have to trust that your ability is going to take over and that you're going to make the plays when, when, when it needs to be made. So how do you calm your nerves? Um, I, don't, I'm not really, I don't really get too high, that's, um, that's the thing. <laughs> so I don't really get too nervous. Um, and part of it is just knowing that I've done everything I can up to that moment to put myself in the best situation. And it's just like a test, it's just like an exam. Once you know that you've studied all you can, you're kind of able to accept the, uh, the outcome a little bit more. So, so yeah, I just have to make sure I get myself ready the week before, um, do my assignments, make sure I know what I'm meant to, meant to be doing when, and then I just know everything's going to take care of itself. And how, but how do you stay motivated like this? And also, and, and also how do you how do you motivate your teammates, for example? How would you describe your own role within the team? Yeah, um, I like to think I lead with example. So that's by being on time to all the meetings, turning up to, um, to all the meetings, um, being on the field, you have to, you know, even though I personally don't think I, I don't need the hype, but you have to be willing to hype other people up. Um, you have to be willing to help, help your teammates up. Um, but it, it, most important for me is just if you do your job, um, you can entrust that other people themselves will do their job. And the best way to, to calm other people's nerves is just to do what you're meant to do very well. Because um, if I'm on the field now and everyone knows I'm going to give 100% all the time, I'm going to be at the right place in the right time, then it kind of takes the pressure off them. And then they can just focus on what they need to do rather than what I need to do. Um, so yeah, if all level 11 players can do that, um, then yeah, it will make the game a lot easier for everyone. So let's focus on the Berlin Thunder now. How mm -hmm. would you describe you guys as a team? What's the atmosphere like between you? Mm -hmm. And how do you get along? I mean, we get along great, um, both on and off the field. We're always looking to improve. Um, unfortunately, the season hasn't gone um, as we expected. But um, from what you can see, from, what, from training, from our game clips, they're like little glimpses of greatness. And I feel like that's probably the most the, that's probably the, the most um, was detrimental to the team. It's just the fact that we haven't been able to show. It's only been glimpses. Um, we haven't been able to play consistently for a full game yet, um, and we're always working at it week, week in week out to say exactly where we're going wrong, to say exactly how we can fix it in the future. But um, it's frustrating because you know, like we know, like we're just so close to being such a good team. Um, we just have to eliminate the the mental, mental mistakes that, that we made. And what's the relationship like between the coaches and the players and how important is this relationship? Yeah, the relationship is fine. Like, we're all working towards a common goal. I feel like we all have the, um, the same aim, the same achievements in mind. Um, so that's never really been an issue. And we all um, working together to try and eliminate, eliminate this mistake. So we're all working um, to see exactly how we as a player, as, um, as, as players, as coaches and as a franchise can improve week in, week out. So um, hopefully it carries on into next year and then we can, uh, we, can, we can get even better. So could you see yourself playing in the European League of Football for a second year? I, I, I can see that happening. I mean, if the right circumstances, um, um, if the right conditions are met and the right circumstances come in place, then yeah, it's definitely something I would and what's your prediction for season two in general? Also, also for looking at the Berlin Thunder, do you think they will be stronger in season two? In season two, definitely. Yeah, they'll definitely be, um, be a lot better just because we already have this year of experience. Um, it's just depending on the type of players, the type of coaches we can bring in next year to, to really um, push ourselves, to really make sure like we get rid of those mental errors. Because like I said, the mental errors, they have to go. You can't win a football game. Um, making four or five mistakes every game um, and that probably has to start from the training ground. It's things that we have to fix in training ground because um, you can be training is there, you can make the mistakes in training and then you fix it but you, you can't carry it on into games so I'm hoping that's probably going to be the number one change next year.
Well, thank you very much. It was a great pleasure to you get too. to know you a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Best of luck for, well, the rest of the season, mm -hmm. for season two maybe, and yeah. of course for making your dreams come true and yeah, seeing you play in the States. Hopefully. It would be great. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, that would be great. You too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.